Welcome back to Cart Globe for episode six on your Karting Global News Network. Here in Europe, we're privileged to do what we love and what we are passionate about, to race. Some of the faces we see are already smiling, while others on the opposite side of the globe are still waiting. So sit back, fasten your seatbelt and hang on. In Florence, Italy, we found a very European person who comes from Belgium, lives and works in Italy, and now races for Slovenia. Welcome to Cart Globe, Zenderu. How are you? Hi, Jenny. Thank you. Hi. I'm where, very good. Where are you? I'm in, uh, in Florence, in Italy. Nice. Very nice. You're in Florence, because that's where you work, obviously, <laughs> in the city. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, in the centre, yeah. Live and work. Tell me, what's it like uh, being back there? I know that you escaped from Italy for a few months, didn't you? Uh, yeah, when the, um, when the quarantine uh, came out, uh, the last day before they closed the borders, uh, we escaped to Slovenia, as there the, the rules were a little bit easier because uh, here in Italy it was complete lockdown. Uh, so yeah, we, we tried to find a, a better place for those few months. Yes, okay. So now you're working again. How is that going? You know, because I know you're also, you've been racing, I've seen a couple of podiums, you're back on the track. Um, you can tell us about your program, but how is it going now with the work and travel and everything? I mean, yeah, we, I'm, I'm, I'm back at work. It, there is still a, a lot of uncertainty um, because, you know, the corona it's all the time uh, is changing. Um, so, there is, we don't know the future, you know, it, it changes all the time. So it's good to be back at work, um, but it's also good to be, to be racing again uh, and to do the, the, the coaching. So yeah, it's good to be back. Okay, so tell me, what's your program then for this season? You've just started, I guess, in the last few weeks with the racing. So what have you got on, on the plan for this year? Um, yeah, so we, we started, we, we finished last year uh, on a high with uh, third place at the Grand Finals. Um, and in the beginning of this season, we did a, a lot of testing, a lot of coaching. So it was looking to be a good year. Um, and then unfortunately, the, the COVID came. Um, and then when from the day the tracks opened again, we were every weekend on the track, uh, driving myself and, uh, and coaching. So for now, we, we've done two races um, and the program for this season is um, so the National Slovenian Championship, the Central Eastern Europe uh, Zone Championship, which is by the FIA, and then the Euro Trophy and some of the Aust RMC Austria races. Oh my goodness. And then towards the end of the year, the International Trophy, which is at Portimao. And hopefully we get a ticket for the for the grand final. Of course, we've seen you at the grand finals many times. Um, good luck, bad luck on the podium. Always wanting to go back and take that number one trophy. Um, now you're coaching, you're sharing your knowledge. Finally, I, I suppose you have the time now, though, don't you? If you're not so busy with work, you've got a little bit more time to be on track and do more of the coaching. Yeah, I have now Thursdays and, and Fridays off um, as there is less work. So it, it helps for the, um, for the coaching. Uh, this season I've already worked with almost eight drivers. Um, so yeah, it's, it's from last year on this year, it, it improved a lot. And uh, we've already had a few good results with the, the DD2 Master, the, the Micro Max. So, Every driver is different, so it's, yeah. it's, it's also a good, good school for me and a, a great experience because with each person you need to adapt, so uh, it's, it's great. It's been great and looking forward to, to the rest of the season. Hopefully we get some, some race wins. How do you think they're going to handle this sort of shortened season now, the drivers? You know, because they've got not so much time for coaching and testing. You've been done, doing quite a bit of that with the training, but how do you think they're going to cope with this, trying to fit everything in before the European winter? Yeah, it's, it's I mean, the schedule has been, has been reduced. Um, so 
most for us the we have sometimes four championships in in one race weekend so that makes it a little bit easier so there are less race weekends um but some some months we have three four races one after another so yeah we we try to manage and and move ourselves around in in the best way possible because also traveling at this point it's it's a little bit more complicated yeah. so yeah every we need to take race by race and and day by day so now of course uh, i ran into you last week in germany maybe you can tell us what's new Senderuv, you had a great experience, I think, doing something completely different in karting. Yeah, um, I was able to test the, the new project E20 e-kart. Um, it, it was great. I mean, every time when a new opportunity comes or something new is available, uh, it's great to, to try it out. Every experience is uh, gains. It helps you in, in the future, like you said previously, winning and losing. It defines us and it makes us better people, better drivers. So it was great, a great opportunity to, 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 to try it. And um, maybe it's the start of a new era. Who will see? <laughs> yes, we will see. Lots of new things happening, though, and, and really nice to see you. Of course, I'd like um, to just leave Cart Globe now and go for a walk around Florence with you in your lunch break. But I know I can't do that because I've got to make some more calls. But it's been really good to see you anyway, Zen, and um, yeah, we're looking forward to seeing you once again at the top, but also your drivers that you're helping now because you've got more time. And I think it's a great thing. If anyone needs help, they can always look for you on the internet, Zen de Roof. And of course, originally from Belgium, but now yeah. based in Italy for work and also in Slovenia, I guess, a lot of the time for the racing and traveling all around. So we will see you very soon on track, no doubt. Hope so. Thank okay. you, Zen. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. See you. Bye, bye bye. On the way from Italy to Spain, we stop a junior Jamaican along the motorway in France. Alex Powell, welcome to Cart Globe. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And you? I'm good. You're sitting in your car, obviously. Yes, we're on my uh, where I'm on my way to Zuera, mm -hmm. uh, where I'll be driving the pre pre preparation race for the FIA European Championship Round One uh, okay. with my new team, Kart Republic. I had my first race with them last weekend. It was quite a successful weekend. I think um, I qualified second in my group, P4 overall, which was a good first strong uh, result. Yeah, and all the heats I finished top four, top three, so it was quite good. In the pre-final, I was third, so that meant that I had to start the final from sixth on the outside. And unfortunately, on the first lap, there was some collision, and ah. the whole race it wasn't so great. The final, but the weekend itself was a positive weekend. It's okay. definitely, it's definitely really hard to race up the front, but mm. it, I think we're improving and improving every single time. Yeah, it's not easy though. You've moved up from Mini. So what's it like being up there with the bigger boys? Because some of them are really a lot bigger than you. Uh, yes. Uh, unfortunately, I missed three months. Oh, well, yeah. everybody missed three months just because of this virus. So we all had to uh, prepare during this time. And luckily, yeah. I got time to prepare. Yeah. Uh, so I was on the track quite a bit. It's, it's definitely harder because it's just there's more people at the top and there's more people uh, fighting and you're it's like the top 10 can be within half a tenth within a wow. tenth so it's uh and oh obviously goodness. they're a lot bigger than I am so I'm still <laughs> trying to learn and I'm improving yeah uh, so hopefully we can still improve and improve and improve yeah. and hopefully what? get to the way that I was in mini. Okay, what were you, um, because in many you were quite successful, so what were you doing then over the last few months? Where were you? Because originally I know you raced for Jamaica, but I figure you must be somewhere in Europe, obviously staying at the moment because of all the racing every week. But what were you doing in the last months? Where were you? So at the beginning of March, we flew back to Florida. Uh, it was only supposed to be a week or two that we were there, and it ended up being three months. So during this time, I was preparing, doing a lot of testing on, on track in an X30, in an OKJ. 
um, we went back to a mini and I was teaching a kid in, in Florida uh, the basics of, and, and a mini and because he was a micro driver and I was teaching him all this stuff, race craft. Uh, I was on the simulator a lot. So just practicing all the tracks, including Zuera, which is this weekend. Uh, and it was a lot of workouts uh, uh, as well. I, I was doing a lot of workouts every every day, twice a day, once or twice a day. Uh, so yeah, it was definitely a tough couple of months, definitely different. But I think that imp that helped me improve of this these last well last week and hopefully this weekend, and we can keep on improving and improving. Yeah. Now you're only 12 years old, not 13 until September. You told me. Are you doing any schoolwork at all? Any uh, yes, I am. That's my yes, question. Yes, I am. My my <laughs> school helps me a lot with uh, with all my traveling and getting. Well, currently it's it's quite good because we have online school now because we couldn't go to school. So yeah. it was I was attending class every every day. Uh, whereas normal school, I would miss two days a week, three days a week. So I, it was definitely better for my attendance, <laughs> but. Yeah, the school definitely cooperates really well with my parents and they send me the work and a lot of homework as well. Uh, and a lot of catching up when I miss school, they help me catch up, which is quite nice, I think. Okay, so when is your school year ended that you have exams and things like this? Do you have to be back home for that? Uh, the school ended around two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And because it's an international school, they don't have end of year exams or midterm okay. exams. They they have ex tests like every week or every other week. Right. So it sort of makes up for the for the not, not having yeah. a middle year and a end of year yeah. test. Maybe not such a bad idea actually. No, not so much stress. <laughs> One other question: You yeah. mentioned that you started with a new team. So uh, you're with the energy team before. You were very successful, now you're with Cart Republic and obviously you've made the change for a reason. What's the reason? Um, so energy was really helpful for us. That they, they picked us up in Las Vegas in 2017. Uh, we are racing in America and in Trinidad before that. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, they, they saw us in Las Vegas and they asked us to do a test in Europe and the test was quite successful. Um, it was raining and I wasn't so good in the rain, but when it dried up, I was there. So they asked me to do a couple of races and that's how it went for the next year. And then two years, pardon. Um, and then two weeks ago, it, it was, w wasn't really working out. And then we decided to move to the Cart Republic team because we saw that there was a lot of other drivers in the top 10 and we mm -hmm. could compare data off of them, where they were faster, where they got off the brake, where they got on the brake, where they got on the gas. So it was a lot of different components and I could learn off of what they were doing and hopefully that would help me progress faster and better. Okay, so now you've got to adjust to a new team, new chassis. Yes. You're on your way to Zuera um, and you've got the European Championships in two weeks. What else are you doing for the rest of the year then? What's your program now? Um, so we have two weeks now in Zuera. And then we have the European Championship in Sarno. And I'm also doing the FIA Academy. Okay. Which starts in Adria in two, two weeks, I believe, mm -hmm. or three weeks, uh, which I've also been preparing for. Uh, and hopefully we can do quite well in that championship as well. So, so far I've competed in the WSK Super Master Series. I will compete in the FIA European Championship, the Academy, the Driver Academy, maybe a one or two events in the DKM. Um, and of course the World Championship. Oh my goodness. I'm... I'm exhausted just thinking about that. How are you going to manage all this in such a short time, in a few months? How is this possible? I mean, it's great uh, if you like to go karting every week. Yeah. You think you can handle all this travel um, and driving? Yeah, I'm sure I will. But the, all the federations are trying to make up for all the races that are lost. Yeah. And unfortunately, we lost three months. So they're trying to make up those three months. And at one point, we have two, week, two race weekends in one week.
Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, they're definitely trying to fit stuff in. It will definitely be harder than usual, but we just have to work through it. And if, um, once we get through this, hopefully next year, we'll not have the same problem as we did this year. And it will be a little bit easier. Um, but I think I, I can do it. I think I can do it and I think I'll do well. I'll hopefully well, do well. Hopefully you will do well. I know you've got Mike Wilson, haven't you, riding on board with you um, as well, supporting you, guiding you through this. Yes, so I do. I think you've got a little bit of uh, assistance there that is going to help you be <laughs> most successful as you can be. And of course, as you said, you had the chance to, to drive more. So in the break, congratulations anyway. Um, I'm, I'm happy you've had this time with us. Also to, to start with a new team. I mean, this is so exciting as well. Yes, thank you for giving me this time. Thank you for asking me to do the interview. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, hopefully I can fit in with the new team well. The, yeah. the last weekend with the new team, it was amazing. They, they were really uh, welcoming all the drivers, all the team, I mean, all the mechanics. Uh, so I think, I think I'll just get more used to the team and more comfortable with the team as the more races I do. Well, enjoy this week. All the best. Good luck. We can watch Thank the you. live timing anyway in the, the live stream there at the Champions Thank you. of the Future. And yeah, say hi to everyone. Say hi to Mike. And thanks very much, Alex. It's been great to share this time with Thank you. Thank you. So stay safe on the road as well. And um, yeah, we'll see you maybe at the DKM later in the year. I might have the pleasure of seeing you in person and making an interview. Thank you. Thank you for okay. this time. Bye. Hopefully see you soon. Bye. Bye. To speak to an Italian who's a world champion and living his karting dream, we go to Suera. Lorenzo Travisanuto. Welcome to Kart Globe. How are you? All, all fine, all good, thanks. We're here currently in Spain to, to drive for the R, RGMMC Championship. And uh, it's going to be a good testing for the Europeans. So we're entering in the, in the main phase of the, of the season and I'm really thrilled to start. You know, after being stopped for, for so long, it's, it's good to be back. I'm sure it is good to be back. Now, uh, you look a little bit tired. Have you had a long trip to get to Zuera? Yeah, actually, yes. We, we traveled from Sarno. We took a boat on, on Monday, and it was a boat from Civitavecchia to Barcelona. So it was like a 20, 20 something hours boat and then we arrived here late night yesterday and today we're on track to, to build up the tents My and goodness. first material for tomorrow. Wow, you've been, you've been busy, it's a long trip. Now of course you were racing on the weekend. How has this been? How many races have you had in the last few weeks? Well actually in the last few weeks we had, we started just two weeks ago. We had testing before. like. We did, I think, something like 10 days of testing out of 15, 14 days available. So it was quite a quite hard to, to get back to that rhythm. And then we had a couple of races in, in Adria and Sarno. And now, and now again, we have a race this week, this weekend. And then we, we finally have one week of break and then we're back at it for the Europeans. Okay, so you'll stay in Spain for that then? No, I think. I think probably we'll get back home because I, I haven't came at home for, for like three weeks now. So <laughs> I've got to also say hello to my family and, and just get back and clean all the stuff and get ready to go again. Okay, wow, what a, what a lot of traveling all the way over to Zuera. Now, this is a question I want to ask you. How does this impact the racing for you as a driver? You know, you've won a couple of world championships, European, WSK many titles, um, right back to when I guess you were younger. Have you ever experienced this and how will this affect now the results or your performance, do you think, that you've got so many races and you've got all this travelling so close together? It's not, it's not easy. I, well, actually every year we say oh, we got to do less, we got to do less and relax a bit and eventually every, every year we have more to do. But it's a lot about managing also yourself, like physically, mentally, you got to give you the break. And I think it's also impossible to be always 100%, but really try to focus and build up 
called the main race of the season. And also when you when you have so many races consecutive, you gotta take your breaks and just sleep properly, try to rest when you can. And so that way you can keep yourself in shape physically and mentally. Okay, and what did you do yourself? I saw a little bit on social media. What were you doing in the in the break in the lockdown before you came back on track? Well, uh, fortunately, I, I saw how things were developing, so I went to a decathlon and I built, I bought some home gym stuff. So I managed <laughs> to, to do quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of gym at home. I, I like also working out, so to me, it's yeah. not been a problem. And, and I also take the, a few weights with me around, so whenever I, ha I have the chance that we have some breaks, I can work out and, and keep on shape. And, and on the other side, I, I also carry a book with me, which, which I think is a, is a good thing, even you know, to keep a little bit of knowledge. And, okay, which, and book, which book are you shape. reading at the moment then? I'm currently reading a book from uh, uh, Yuval Harari, which is an Israeli historic, historian, and he talks about mostly about ideological, philosophical, and about, a lot about science and the future of human being. And otherwise, I read a lot of uh, autobiographies from from Djokovic to to Agassi, and it's just you know to to also be inspired from those kind of people and keep an, uh, an eye open on, on the rest of the world out yes. of the sport. Are you reading in but Italian or in English? Both. Both, okay. Both. And it depends, of course. Uh, I have no, not much problem reading in English, but of course it's a bit more challenging. So mm -hmm. when, I, when I need a more easy read, I read in Italian. When I want to also challenge myself a bit, I read okay. in English. But also I do that before going to sleep, so you know you you relax and you 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 rest a bit also mentally, and then and then I try to get also maximum rest as possible in the night. I think okay. that's very very important. When How you start many hours? One race after the hour. When I get to the races, probably even like during the races, even nine hours per night, wow. quite easily. Okay. Yeah, and and I feel like I need them. Yeah. When, okay. Now during the before during the quarantine, even you know seven seven hours, seven thirty hours per, per night, it already felt resting. But during the races, I think you know with all the psychological effort as well, mm. you you need you need a good rest. And wow. I think it's important, especially when you start doing so many one yeah. after the other. Lots of good advice there for young drivers if they want some tips. Um, tell me, you're wearing a different shirt from the last time. I saw you and we were in Amphing and you took me on a hot lap for our Cart Data sure. TV. Different team shirt. Same. Tell me what's happened. Well, I think just uh, mostly I felt like uh, what, what we could have achieved together as a team with Car Republic in the last few years we did. And, and I thought it was important for them to, to achieve their results with other drivers, I felt like. Uh, and on the other side, I, I felt that even for me to find new motivation, it was important to, to change and try something else. And honestly, in my life, I, I always, since I was a kid, I always dreamt about being a Tony Car official driver. As it, it always seemed like, you know, a bit like the Ferrari driver in Formula One. Yes. You know, that, that's, that's the peak where everybody wants to get. And so I had the chance to join the team this year. and. Considering all the results and and the and the journey I had with KR, I thought it was it was a good moment to try something new and give myself new new stimulus. Congratulations! Um, it's it's really nice and it's something like you say important for you. What's on the plan then uh, for the rest of the year? I guess you are still going to do all those races that you said you're going to slow down a bit. Are you going to do all those yeah. races? <laughs> Probably yes, and uh, probably going to be even more. But uh, no, definitely, I'm trying to to build a bit of confidence with the material and try to learn how to work with it. Uh, and hopefully, we can be competitive for the European and mostly the World Championship, which is going to be late in the year. For sure, this stop didn't help me a lot because I was 
I was getting more and more confident when, when we stopped and I wanted to test more to, to try to get the most feedback from the chassis. And so now we're, we're getting a little bit back in the rhythm. Okay, a little bit of work to do. And before I let you run off and keep putting up the awning and all the work that you're getting out of now. Um, Not a problem. Take your time. <laughs> I want to say happy birthday. Uh, thank you. Thank because you. I was reading and I missed it that you've just turned 21. Is that right? Yeah, correct. It was, what was it? Seven days ago. Yes, yeah, seven Friday days ago. There, so a, different, a different way to, to spend my, my birthday. But, uh, You're doing what you like. Nice yeah. Yes, correct, correct. And also my father managed to, to come by and, and say hello on that day because we were in Italy. Fantastic. So I had, I, it was good. I enjoyed it. Very good. I can hear that nice um, Zuera wind um, on the track yeah, there. <laughs> it's, also moving, it's also moving the, the phone and all. And it's going to be pretty windy. Luckily yeah. we built one tent and now, now we go for the next one. Okay. Well, we're going to let you go. We're going to keep watching and really appreciate your time, Lorenzo. It's really nice to talk to you. Wish you all the best with your new team and going for a hat trick on the world championships this year so we'll see what happens no doubt we'll run into you again and we'll keep watching thank you so much it's been a pleasure okay. also for me and we'll try we'll try yes we'll see i can't promise but we'll see how it develops okay all right thank you all very right. much bye you take too. care you too. bye bye, bye. The next driver came to Europe, won his world titles in Egypt and Emirates, lives in Japan and has a bigger race toy this season. Kanbawa Ukiya-san. Kanbawa. Genki desu ka? Genki desu. Yeah, cool. So you're good. Yeah. I know it's really late yeah. in the night, really late in the night. You're in a hotel, I think, in Tokyo, is it? Uh, yes, currently, yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay, so tell me, what are you doing? What are you doing? Um, yeah, I had a, I had a, a pretty long meeting tonight and uh, I'm discussing about the uh, racing and uh, some future planning. But uh, it was meaningful and a uh, really positive meeting. So. Very good. And also this weekend, I'm going to start uh, finally this weekend in the Super GT Championship. At Fuji, so it's really exciting. It's very exciting. Super GT, superstar. Yeah. Huh? Thank you. <laughs> I know, but today we've been focusing on talking to a lot of the drivers, from young yeah. drivers like uh, Alex Powell, who's only 12. Um, you know, other guys like you who've been at the top step of the podium, world level. And now it's so exciting to see that you're going to be racing Super GT. Of course, you've been in Europe, you've done all these things, you've studied here, you've raced, you've won your titles in various countries, in Egypt, Ghibli Raceway, Elaine Raceway in the Emirates, European champion, of course, as well. And now the next step. I know you still spend some time on the track. Have you been doing any karting or at any races already this year? Yes, um, I know everyone would like a kind of like postpone due to the coronavirus situation. Yeah. But uh, luckily, I had uh, some chance to do uh, Suzuka Racing School with uh, some small kids in the karting, yes. which is using the Junior Max. And uh, also, I had a uh, actually last week and finally start the. Uh, all Japan Championship in the OK class. I look after two drivers in that class, which went uh, very well. So yes. luckily I had uh, some chance to do some, still, you know, kind of like connect with the uh, karting. Yeah, it's great, really good. And we've been talking to Mr. Matsudo uh, and Kevin as well from Japan in the yeah. last shows um, in, the, in May, in the first month. And, the, and then of course, after their next race everything went really well but of course everyone is looking now to say when are we going to get back on track for racing and this weekend is your chance finally yeah. 
you can get back on track. But a little bit different though, you're not in the go-kart. Maybe you can tell us what you're doing this year in the Super GT. Who are you racing with? Yes, um, currently I'm joining in the uh, team Red Bull Logan Honda, which is, uh, I, mean, I know it's a pretty long history team and, uh, and uh, one of the famous team in the Super GT. And yes. uh, you know, it's, a, it's my almost second time or third time sharing the car with uh, some partner yes. in the race. And also, also this year, I, do, I mean, Almost every year, I continue to do, as I said before, the Suzuka Racing School karting part, yeah. and also Fogra, and uh, also look after two drivers in the OK classes in the All Japan Championship. Yes, so, so you're busy, yeah. very busy. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Luckily, I had uh, some chance to do some jobs, and uh, you know, kind of until now and. Uh, which is really interesting to see, like, you know, it's, I was kind of like always driving. I know still I'm driving for, you know, some races, but uh, it's always nice to see, like, growing up the drivers, how they develop, and uh, also I can see different points of view, you know, as a coaching. So yes. it's really nice experience for me. Very, very good experience. And uh, I saw you the last time we were in Italy, in Sano, um, at the grand finals. Yeah. You were also <laughs> helping some of the guys from the team in Japan. Yeah. Uh, and you told me that you just popped up to uh, another racetrack to drive the Lamborghini because you're racing in the FIA motorsport games, which you ended up winning. We've got some great photos from that yeah. as well. <laughs> First time yeah. in the Lamborghini and I think you were quicker than the factory driver, but we won't mention that. No one will. <laughs> we won't tell them. Um, but in any case, yeah. Ukiyo, we then saw you in uh, Portugal for the super shootout, I guess it was, the Porsche shootout with yeah. all the superstar drivers yeah. once again um, from yeah. around the World Career Cup because you won that. Uh, yeah. You also won the Formula 3, the Asian series. Uh, exactly. yeah. yeah, so you've been a little bit busy and I guess that's why you've got this drive, is it? Is that how you got to be racing the Super GT? Yeah, I think uh, it's definitely this result helped uh, to become a you know Super GT driver, especially yeah. with the GT 500. Normally, the young driver is starting from the GT 300 to get the experience, and you know, so just to get the like experience in the Super GT Championship. Then after, if the result is good, then some of the manufacturer picking you up and, uh, you know, kind of become GT500. But in my case, it, you know, I never had experience in uh, GT300, just straight jump in the GT500, which is same as the DTM. So yes. it's really cool. And uh, I mean, it's really kind of like anything, you know, in that case, say anything could happen if you do like well and uh, yes. if you push to the limits. So. Well, I'm sure you know you you'll enjoy that when you're sitting on the grid or racing this weekend. All those memories will probably come back, and you'll think about that when you're coaching these young drivers at Suzuka and in the other championships, yeah. all Japan. Um, that maybe you give them that opportunity as well, one day because they're learning from you. So. But it's been really nice to talk to you. I know it's really, really late there in the middle of the night, um, but we really appreciate well, it your time. Really matter for me. <laughs> no, you don't mind because yeah, you're on Cart Globe. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, but it's great to it's see you. It's always nice to see you. And, uh, yes, well, always nice yeah. to see you too. Um, so, Domo Arigato and good luck. <laughs> and we will speak to you soon. <laughs> Thank you. We'll be watching, Definitely. Ikio. Thank you very much. So, yeah. yes, we know you're carrying the Red Bull colours from Austria here, so we'll be, we'll be watching. <laughs> okay, thank you and good night. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. We fly south to Melbourne to find a guy with 18 Australian Championship titles from the past 20 plus years of racing 
and more titles than anyone else we know. Hi, Dave Sarah, how are you? Yeah, look, going really well, thanks, uh, Jen. Obviously, uh, we're in lockdown at the moment, back in Melbourne at the moment, but um, look, there's obviously bigger things to worry about than, uh, than kart racing. But uh, yeah, obviously really excited to be um, joining you on Karting Globe tonight. Yeah, it's nice to have you. I know you've been following us. Uh, I've also been following you on Swapping Paint, your uh, podcast there behind you. I can see the little guys. It's been really interesting. That's it. <laughs> Um, but of course, Dave, you know, you just said to me that you're in lockdown again and I've been watching a little bit of what's going on, preparation for the season. It's getting shorter and shorter. We still have this uncertain time of, you know, what's going to happen. What have you been doing to kind of keep yourself mentally prepared, I guess, because not only are you a driver, but you're also more so now a coach as well. What are you and your yeah. little guys yeah, been doing? Up. Well, it's funny, obviously, like, this downtime's actually been able to, um, you know, try and review a lot of the things that we could have done better previously. So, um, you know, working with kids at the age between sort of seven and even up to 15 years of age, uh, when you're sort of bouncing from racetrack to racetrack from week to week, you just sort of lose time. You don't get a chance to actually, you know, reflect on some areas that you can improve on or some areas that you're doing really well. So it's given us an opportunity to sort of, um, yeah, look back on what's worked and keep doing those things um, as often as we possibly can in preparation for... Uh, like I said, hopefully maybe in September we'll be looking to, to get back into the racing season. Okay, and what about for you personally? Um, have you been able to get out in the cart? I know you, when the lockdown started, I actually saw a photo of you on Twitter and uh, you were the only one on the track and you said if you're going to be locked down, you're just going to stay there. Have you been in the cart at all and anything new for you this season? Yeah, so look, I've, I've had a couple of chances to drive uh, some friends' carts. So Nick Perkat, the, uh, the Australian supercars driver, He's pretty active in his in his cart driving at the moment, so it's been pretty fun to um, you know to get out and have a drive with him. We still keep it quite of competitive, even though it's been in a fun environment. Um, like I said, you still get the answer when you're still you know both eagerly competitive as well. So at the moment, I'm uh, DPE is currently building up a, a new Arrow X5 cart for me as well. So um, not too sure what races I'll be looking to come back for, but uh, but definitely want to stay active in the cart racing scene. It obviously helps with a lot of the coaching that we do to be um, to be you know active on, on the karting track as well. So excited to get back out there and to race some of these younger kids who have got a lot of energy, do a lot of testing, and um, it's sort of like you know I was when I was you know said ten years younger. I was had that bit more eagerness, but now I sort of like to have a bit more fun with it. Okay, now I think you're the most accredited driver in Australian history when we talk about how many national titles you have. How many is it, Dave? Uh, yeah, so I've got lucky enough to win 18 Australian championships. So, um, yeah, that's over the course of, what is it now, maybe at 24 years of, of driving carts. So, um, yeah, had a great successful run. Uh, maybe I can add one or two more throughout, uh, you know, the, the rest of the career, hopefully. Oh, all right. We've seen you also, All Japan Championship, um, Florida Winter Tour Champion, uh, Podium Rotax Grand Finals. You're racing everything. You've been racing everything. With all that experience, now you made a, an interesting point. What happens now that the season doesn't start in Australia, say, till August, if that's the case? How do these kids then handle such a short you know, space of time with not much training and going from one race to another, perhaps not much development time there? I definitely think that um, just drivers who've got the most experience are going to be the ones who are going to benefit from this uh, longer break. So um, I think if I was to come back into racing myself, it'd be a lot easier transition for me to just jump in for those one or two races a year, considering these other you know, teenagers, kids haven't been able to get um, that progressive, that driving and, and that coaching and just the race craft that they, um, they've been sort of lacking in the last few months. In saying that though, um, like I said, it's, it's a tricky one because like I said, kids just need that time in the track, time in the seat to, um, to process a lot of things as well. So kids learn very fast these days. They watch a lot of YouTube videos. Um, you know, they, they're racing the simulators. They're still competitive on any sort of gaming or platforms they're, uh, they're on these days. So I think they'll be able to bounce back pretty quickly. Okay. Anything else that you want to add there? A um, bit of a plug for Swapping Paint. Who's coming up next on your podcast? Yes, yeah, so obviously the Swapping Paint podcast has been something just to, uh, to fill in some time. I've been fortunate enough to speak to, uh, to many motor racing superstars, including some Formula One drivers, uh, some IndyCar champions and supercar champions as well. So in the next few episodes, we've got Shane Van Gisbergen, a former supercars champion. Um, who else have we got? We've got uh, Nicholas Latifi, the Williams Formula One driver. His episode's due to drop. And a couple of the guests that we've got coming up are going to be Chaz Mostert from the Australian Supercar Championship 
and Nick Cassidy who races uh, in the Japan Super Formula GT uh, Championship as well. Okay, well something to keep you busy then while you're locked away there in Melbourne and uh, fingers crossed that that passes very soon and we'll have some news because we're still waiting to see when you can hit the track for the first race of you know, the Australian Championship and the Pro Tour. So looking forward to that. Thanks for your time. Also, Dave, it's been great to see you. You look uh, like you're nice and healthy, so keep up that fitness and, and uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing you soon on track. Now, thanks very much, Jen. All the best with Car Globe. Thanks for having me on and uh, we'll see you guys soon. Okay, see you. Take care, bye, bye. Now to check out the news from our media friends. Polski karting is on holidays, but tells us that the karting season has begun with the Polish Championship and Rock Cup held in Schlomsen near Warsaw, more than 150 drivers, while six events will continue through the summer and end in October, as well as a memorial race for the former CIK FIA vice president and first karting promoter. The historic karts also made history for the first time there. Lots of international success as well over the past weekends, which we'll post on our Facebook page for everyone to have a look at. News also from the Netherlands, as Chrono Karting RMC announces their RMC series, reduced to only four rounds, but a great deal for their series drivers. So check it out on social media for more details. From South Africa, Jan tells us, still no chance to go racing, but other sports are beginning. So come on South Africa, time to go racing. Back to Australia, where the tracks are open with borders closed, still again, state of Victoria is in lockdown in Melbourne, so many people can't go karting. Let's hear more news now from Kelvin O'Reilly, CEO of Karting Australia. Welcome to Kart Globe, Kelvin Riley, the CEO from Karting Australia. Hi Jenny, how are you? I'm good, good. How are you going? Up there in Queensland, is it sunny? Uh, it's a beautiful winter's day in uh, in Queensland, uh, which means it's cold overnight or cold for us, which is uh, down to about uh, 12 or 15 uh, overnight and uh, 22, 23 degree sunny days at the present stage. So uh, okay. we're in God's country at the moment and we're coronavirus free up here. Yes, I noticed that uh, Queensland are being quite strict, aren't they, with uh, what's going on and not so lucky, of course, for the guys down south though. So maybe it would be interesting to hear from you, I guess, what impact is this now? Because it's even getting worse, I think this week from what I've heard, what impact is this having now on the Australian karting? Uh, it's, uh, we're, uh, we're unlucky, but we're fortunate in comparison to uh, so much of the rest of the world uh, in that uh, you know, our numbers uh, compared to Brazil and the US are, uh, are very, very low. Uh, but uh, having said that, um, the likelihood is that Victoria is going to go into a stage four lockdown uh, shortly. And we've got hotspots popping up in uh, New South Wales. It's almost impossible to run a national championship uh, in a country like Australia where you've got border closures uh, that stop people from uh, travelling from uh, Victoria to New South Wales and also up to Queensland. Um, we were hopeful of uh, releasing a new national calendar during the course of this week, uh, but uh, as each day goes by, uh, that's a little looking uh, more and more unlikely. But we still need to give people hope, and uh, you know we have uh, a number of different scenarios and formats uh, to be able to run uh, the Australian Kart Championship uh, throughout uh, the last quarter of this year. Uh, and we still intend to uh, do that. Uh, our focus at the moment, though, is on club competition and getting our clubs reinvigorated uh, as uh, they've all come out of uh, the coronavirus lockdown. Um, and uh, are now uh, we're racing in uh, all Australian states. And uh, um, obviously the old statement, absence makes the heart grow fonder, is uh, they're never truer words. And uh, we've got uh, great numbers showing up at club competitions at the present stage. We had 150, which is great uh, uh, numbers at Newcastle last weekend. Uh, last time I looked for the uh, event that we've got coming up at uh, Ipswich in southeast Queensland this weekend, 
uh, they'd ticked over the 200, which uh, uh, they thought they'd uh, be doing pretty well with 120, given the circumstances at the moment. So all of those things are positives. Um, and uh, the fact that uh, we've managed to come out of it as we have and in large part, uh, our sport was one of the first sports to actually get going again after uh, uh, the government started to ease the restrictions. So, you know, we're, uh, um, we need to remind ourselves, we used to call ourselves the lucky country. We actually truly are the lucky country. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll uh, just continue to, uh, um, you know, meet the battles that we need to meet and do all of the things that we need to do to meet the government requirements ensure that the sport uh, uh, continues to roll on and, uh, and, and grow um, on the backside of uh, this pandemic. Yeah, I think a lot of people will be happy to hear you um, saying also the club numbers are, are up. I've also heard this from Mark Wicks at Cart Sport News there in Melbourne. And he said, it is this case that it does make the heart grow fonder. Great uh, message there for everyone to get that go-kart out, get back on track and enjoy some, you know, time with their local club drivers, even if they're not able to travel and do the state or the national championships. Absolutely. When we came out of lockdown, um, we, Lee and I mapped uh, out uh, a program for uh, all of our states. Uh, on, we called it our roadmap out of lockdown and uh, started with social karting activities um, because we were restricted with the numbers that we could put on a track at any given point in time. And Eastern Lions, which is uh, now the largest club in Victoria, uh, you know, the president uh, of, uh, of that club, Steve Pegg, said to us uh, after their first weekend of racing, he said, I haven't seen some of these people smile in seven years. And uh, <laughs> the, social, the social karting side, uh, he said, I think it's going to be a way for people to fall back in love with the sport that they uh, always used to love, but fell out of love with because of uh, the competitive element. And it's true, um, competition is people want to win, uh, but it's not all about competition. So we've been uh, beating a drum very loudly for uh, uh, quite some time and even more so during uh, COVID-19. That, that, that uh, our mix of uh, karting activities needs to be uh, uh, channeled in a different direction to have a, a strong mix of social karting uh, and competition karting. Uh, we've put together a, a working group, uh, you know, called an innovation working group uh, to uh, uh, brainstorm some uh, things that we might be able to do to um, help people fall back in love even more strongly with the sport. And that's a whole mix of different, uh, different activities. Uh, some competition, uh, some uh, in inverted commas social competition type elements uh, where the trophy and the bit of plastic is, is the all and end all of things but uh, it's just uh, something that is put together so that we get people at the cart tracks having fun and doing what it was that they actually have found that they loved about their sport for so many years. Well that's what karting is all about and that's why so many you know young drivers go into more competitive driving. That's why, you know, we see it's really a business when you go beyond karting as well to cars, a very, very big industry. But the fun part and what a lot of these girls and boys really loved about karting, unfortunately, gets left behind a little bit as they get older and that, that happens. But this is really, really good news. And of course, it makes me feel also in love with karting uh, from when I used to be in Australia also, racing a little bit there with all your friends, have a barbecue. It was a completely different feeling. And I'm sure that this is what's going to come out of this. Like you say, the positive that will come out of this situation is, is something we've heard from other countries as well, exactly this, that they've got to put their heads together now and think about how do they change that and make that plan. And it sounds like all the guys there, yourself and Lee, Hannah Check at Karting Australia have put together a great roadmap and it may change, but, you know, I think it's a really, really exciting start. Oh, uh, it, it will change, that's uh, without doubt. Um, but 
there, there's the opportunity uh, that uh, we have to embrace. And uh, when I say it's an opportunity, it's uh, on the downside because Australia's lucky. Uh, we haven't had a recession here for 29 years. So most of the people who are involved in our sport who are racing have never raced in recessionary times when uh, money's hard to find. Um, motorsport is uh, not cheap. Karting's the cheapest form of motorsport, but that doesn't mean it's uh, a budget sport. So we've got to provide uh, formulas that uh, are able to be done on a, on a reasonable budget. We've still got plenty of people around who want to spend um, large amounts of money and to race at the top level and to be successful in our Australian Kart Championship uh, uh, that we take on the road uh, you know, through uh, out the year. We've got people spending some serious amount of money there and they are seriously good drivers and they're seriously well prepared to you know, go up and to do things uh, over there. I mean, you know, it's not that long ago. It's only, I think, three years ago or thereabouts that Oscar Piastri was uh, uh, driving a go-kart around Todd Road. Jack Doohan was doing it uh, uh, as well. Um, and you see them go over to Europe now and, and, and they are fairly well prepared because of the, the rigours of our championship. And that's fine for those kids. Um, but karting is both a pathway to uh, better levels of motorsport and circuit racing, but it's a destination sport in its own right. We've got, we start at seven years of age uh, and uh, we've got people in their 70s still doing it. Um, We've got a large number of people in their 40s and 50s who race uh, um, in restricted. We've introduced a class called 4SS, which is uh, uh, a four-stroke class because it's simple to do and uh, cost-effective, um, and it, it's it's not technically complex. So it's a social side of it. Um, they get serious when they're on the track, uh, as uh, we want them to be but yeah. they're not so serious that they can't have a year after and just uh, have a great time. And that's yes. one of the things that, or some of the things that we're aiming to achieve. And, you know, by putting together groups like the Innovation uh, Working Group, uh, hopefully we'll get something good out of that. The other thing that's good out of, uh, and I am struggling to find good things out of coronavirus, but um, the use of technologies uh, to uh, get people together um, whoever would have thought of talking to you uh, uh, in Austria from the other side of the world over uh, a computer link on uh, um, a, uh, uh, a server uh, and the clarity of uh, what it is that uh, the there and to be able to we've done, Lee and I have run uh, um, an untold number of uh, webinars and workshops and meetings uh, over the last few months uh, to... Uh, uh, with our clubs and, uh, and associations uh, to uh, actually get them together and actually talk about uh, the issues that we've got, how we're headed, where we're heading with it, what we need to do and to uh, get them together. Never would have done it uh, if it weren't for this. Uh, no. And we embrace, embrace that technology and we'll be better for it uh, uh, as a sport uh, along the way. And yes. uh, those, are, those, are, those are some of the positives, but gee, they're hard to find, I've got to say. Yeah. We're going to wish you luck in any case, Kelvin. Um, I know we're always keeping a close eye on our friends down under. We cross the international dateline and land in Vancouver. Hi, Blake Choker, all the way from Canada. How are you? Hi, good. And yourself? Yeah, good. How's the morning there? Is it nice? Is it cool? Is it warm, sunny? It, it's a beautiful morning, sunny. The last couple of weeks have been raining a lot, and so this is some nice weather, good to go to the track. Yeah. I saw you guys in the news, obviously, um, Western Canadian Karting Tour, the, the championship there. But I'm also wondering how everything's going. You know, we've caught up with Rob Howden a few times on the show recently from Toronto and, and talking to us, you know, also about the US. Maybe you can just tell us how everything's going, what you've been doing. Yeah, so the, I mean, it's been very unique time. The The season was a little bit of a late start. The track was closed here in, in Western Canada, um, but they opened up about a month to two months ago and very small groups are allowed, about a mm hundred -hmm. at the track at a time. 
Okay. And but to be honest, it has been super busy. I've never seen the track more busier now, because I think people want to get out and do things, and uh, so it it's actually wonderful to see. Uh, the one the one big interesting thing is that the Canada U.S. borders closed, and like I can see basically the U.S. from my house, and you can't cross. And so it's it's kind of weird. We can't go to races there, mm. so we're really stuck within Canada, actually. Mm. Now, of course, you've got lots of experience. I can see all those nice NASA panels hanging up in the back. I've known you for many no, years. Grand, <laughs> grand finals. Yes, grand finals. And uh, yeah, also you've been here in Europe. I was just saying before, I bet, you know, you wish you could visit Austria at this beautiful time oh. of the year also. <laughs> yeah, I think I think a lot of us we get so accustomed to traveling and going to different races, we're we're getting a little bit of cabin fever. Mm. So um, yeah, it, it's definitely a unique time. I mean, you always have your favorite restaurants and places you go to, and like you're you're not getting any of that food. No, and of course, as you say, you can't cross the border. So tell me what's happening then for you as far as the racing goes now. You'll be back on track, I think, very soon. Yeah, so um, we, we just started doing club races. And um, I mean, that's that's kind of the local scene. Uh, and then we have the Max Carding Group, which we are doing the Rotax Max Canada Final in August, mm -hmm. uh, where, you know, Western Canadian pilots will be competing to represent Team Canada. So... That's at the end of the month, August 27th to 30th in Edmonton. And uh, we're very excited about that. Yeah, it's, and I don't, don't think a lot of people realize too how big Canada actually is. You know, when you, when you look at the map, it's actually really big. So it's not like you can just sort of go, you know, five minutes up yeah. the road or a few hours and you're at the next track or the next race series. I, I've driven to Quebec a couple times, and uh, it's around 50 hours. So oh Canada's huge. Uh, Ed, to drive to Edmonton is 12 hours. So you you travel a lot of scenery. I mean, it's it's a beautiful drive, the mountains, and I mean that's why I think there's so many Europeans come to the the West Coast to drive mm -hmm. through the mountains and passes because you just don't see that in the world. And what about for karting? You, you say people are back on track. What do you think this is yep. going to do now that the series, and, and as you say, you've got a final there in August, but uh, what's yep. this going to do for the season as far as you know the drivers go? Because this week we're focusing really on the drivers, how they're preparing, what have they been doing in this time when they couldn't yep. go on track? Yeah, I mean, it, it's quite unique. Uh, all of the kids that I coach and work with, we've all gone online and, and we're practicing regularly racing online on different platforms. It really, it really doesn't matter. The, the important thing is to be driving and be active in, in the sport as much as possible. And now that we have the ability to go back to track, we definitely are spending a lot more time practicing and training and you know just trying to get ready for their future that's a good thing though isn't it because usually you don't have all that much time yeah yeah but it you know I, I will say racing online was was quite a a, f a fun time because you're talking you're hanging out it, it really created a community I felt even within our own like BBR team uh, we became a closer knit group which was which was nice this is fantastic. I, I spoke to one of the young guys also that won the, the Rotax eSports um, from Canada. That was quite a while ago now, but I have seen a lot of the racing online. It's really good to hear this, that people could keep that community feeling. So that's a really positive yeah. thing to hear. I was wondering how they were all going because if they're so spread out as well. Yes, yeah, that, that, Rotax, that Rotax race was awesome. I, I tried. I, it's a little bit of a sore spot because I probably put a hundred out, a <clears throat> hundred hours practicing, and didn't qualify, and so I was, <laughs> I was upset. But you know, uh, the group of us that were trying to, you know, we had a great time, always practicing every night, 
and you know so it that was a that was a cool event yeah it was a cool event but in any case Blake I know you've got lots to do I can hear the birds there it's so nice um, to hear the yes. birds there all the way to to Vancouver from here in Austria yeah anything else that we should know about or to expect or do you think you will just begin now the planning for the next season once you get through this yeah I mean I think it's I think it's everybody's just trying to wait and see what happens and the best thing that we can do is do our best and create great events and promote carding and get more people into the sport and uh yeah i mean i think for these situations in western canada carding has really elevated i've talked to to many of the dealers and um They've all sold a lot of go-karts and getting more people in. So I think that's wonderful. People are, are trying to find something to do in this time. And all the tracks have really been socially responsible in terms of like distancing and protocols. And so uh, it's, it's been really good. Such a positive thing to come out of this. And hopefully everyone can get out there and enjoy it. We're going to let you go anyway and keep in touch. We'll be watching in August thank as you. well for the final. Okay. So thank you very yeah. much. And uh, yeah, say hi yeah, to the team you. there, Scott and Scott um, as well. Yeah. So being great talking to you and good luck to everybody for the racing also. And we'll see you later in the year, of course, no doubt thank here you. in Thanks Europe. Okay. <laughs> see? Yeah, yeah, hopefully. Okay. okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Blake. Next, we jump across the North Atlantic, close to the capital of Great Britain, London. Hi, Alex Goldschmidt. How are you? Whereabouts are you in the UK? Tell me. Hi, Jen. Um, yes, I'm located in Manning Tree, just about 100 kilometres north of the uh, capital of England, uh, London, uh, in North Hi. Essex. So... You're looking yeah. very, very uh, spruced up there, <laughs> cleanly shaven, and looks like you've been doing a bit of exercise, I can see. I almost didn't recognise you from the last time I saw <laughs> well, you. I think the last time, yeah, the last time we met was uh, the Winter Cup in Campeos uh, a long, long time ago. Uh, crikey. Um, that's probably over 120 days plus. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's been an interesting time uh, under lockdown, really, to be honest with you, from my perspective, but also from... A lot of people here over in the UK. Mm. And tell me, how's everything going now? I know it's sort of starting to open up. Summer's here. So mm -hmm. what's happening? People are getting back on track. Uh, yeah, I've been in the commentary box for the first time in 120 days back on the 4th of July at a Procast event at Rye House. Um, we had a capacity grid of 30 uh, twin engine carts there. So grassroots motorsport back in full effect. Uh, national uh, championships are starting up again. Uh, we've recently had uh, the uh, Super One uh, BKC run by Dar uh, Darren Beavers and John Hoyle. They've had their first opening season at Clay uh, season opener at Clay Pigeon. Uh, the Daniel Ricardo Series UK uh, with our very own good friend, Mr. Henry Vaudet. I'm glad to see he's not looking like Tom Hanks out of Castaway. And uh, <laughs> shout out to Guy Shepherd for the welcome care package from the, uh, the UAE. But yeah, national competition is flourishing once again. I've been speaking with a lot of people within the karting infrastructure that uh, the three months of lockdown here in the UK were quite significant. There were, you know, offices were closed, workshops were closed, units were closed. There was a lot of uh, uncertainty mm. uh, within the UK, as Henry alluded to when we first went into lockdown. Uh, there's been different changes in terms of England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland uh, in terms of their approach on lockdown. So the UK uh, is now able to travel to continental Europe now for international competition, which is a great sign. Uh, I've been looking at the uh, IKR and uh, you know MS UK, uh, Motorsport UK regulated championships that are now starting come, to come through. And the calendar that I've got to my left-hand side has literally pretty much every weekend through from July to the end of November completely full. Wow. Uh, which is really, really good. Um, yeah. uh, I've spoken with uh, certain distributors within the UK and they have said to me that literally they are having trouble keeping products on the shelf. So engines being fished, tyres flying out the door, 
uh, <laughs> accessories, clothing, the whole lot. Everyone's really, oh, really happy that karting is back mm. here in the United Kingdom. But as with every single territory at the moment dealing with the pandemic, you know, uh, firstly, uh, I, I've known people who have lost friends and family, loved ones mm. through this, and it's not been easy. It's also been a, a struggle for certain people with regards to mental health situations. Yes. Um, and for those wondering about why I'm looking a bit more svelte these days, in the first six weeks of lockdown here, I covered a total of nearly 200 kilometers most evenings. Um, oh so I'm fitter and ready to go yeah. uh, for the forthcoming season. I've got a very compact uh, season through my various commitments as a commentator. Uh, good to see Guillaume Alvarez having a great time at the BNL Karting Series last time out for the, the reboot. Uh, but then you look at Motorsport UK. They have brought back every single category. IAMI, Rotax, KZ2, Honda Cadet, uh, Bambinos was the most recently announced category to finalise the, uh, the calendar. And uh, just having a look at my list that the first round, well, effectively of uh, the the Motorsport UK karting season kicks off with Kart Masters at PF International uh, the fine, uh, the 31st of July until the 2nd of August. Um, that's going to have a lot of interest mm. for, you know, all the relevant categories. You know, there were nine GP plates last year. Myself and Henry were part with the commentary team there. Um, so it's good to see that Henry's uh, sounding as usual behind the microphone with yes. his Welsh banter as always. Um, but yeah, the, the national scene over here is just flourishing, uh, but there have been quite a lot of stringent measures taken into place. Uh, mm -hmm. Motorsport UK recently published something about this, that uh, a driver has to nominate not just themselves, but two people that are going to be coming to the event. There are no spectators allowed. People are having okay. temperature checks and uh, they have to wear face masks whilst they're in the paddock. Mm -hmm. uh, scrutineers are to make as minimal contact as possible. While scrutineering the carts, there has to be a bit more time allowance. Uh, there's also new procedures in place in case of an accident where the drivers, they have to, uh, they get a signal from the marshal who will be wearing PPE and they will give the double thumbs up. And if the driver's okay, they will get out and uh, a yellow flag situation will occur. Uh, medical situations, there will be ambulance crews on site who will be heavily PPE'd, uh, ready to uh take on a medical extraction or an incident that requires medical attention on site there and then. So uh, there have been a lot of people that have been taking on board. There's been a lot of manufacturers or clothing uh, manufacturers that have been making up these uh, these cloth masks that can yes. be rewashed and reused, which mm -hmm. is quite good. So people can sort of uh, not just protect themselves, but appease their sponsors at the very same yes. time, yes. which is really, really good. I even uh, received a photo this morning of one of the team dogs wearing the mask that's been especially mm -hmm. made for their little dog. Um, <laughs> yeah. In, in case it sees other dogs and <clears throat> you just don't know. So, no. Yes, but no, it sounds like they're really, they've really put a lot of uh, time and effort and thought into this. I've been watching mm -hmm. a little bit on social media, but um, yeah, it's really interesting how different it's going to make the, the, the local races and the national races now. Yeah, I mean, also from my perspective, going internationally abroad, you know, I venture over to the, the BNL uh, for my first return to Europe, and it will be 166 days since I've been over to continental Europe. And I've been already told of what to expect, uh, the regulations. So any UK drivers wanting to go over to international competition will have to respect the laws and boundaries and the social distancing yeah. guidance of the re relevant territories. So it is a bit of a wake up call, but a lot of people are embracing it and they want to keep karting as the hashtag has been going yeah. through social media like a, a whirling dervish, so to speak. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to say goodbye now and wish you all the best. We will see you anyway because I know you're doing online stuff, iRacing and all that, mm -hmm. eSports. We'll see you yeah. on the internet very shortly. But uh, thanks very much, Alex, for getting us up to date with what's happening in the UK and wish everyone luck there, obviously, too that they have a nice yep. weekend and, and some good racing and looking forward to Kart Masters already at the end of July. Yes, indeed. And I'll be back, as I said, in Belgium. But yeah, thanks yes. for having me on, Jen. And uh, to all our Kart Globe fans out there, keep, keep on watching. It's been great so far and it's great to be a part of it here on this particular episode. And thank you for the invite, Jen. Thank you. And we'll see you in Karting Gank. From my neighbouring colleague, we hear more about the German high-tech strategy to fight 
for COVID-19. Sevas Bjorn, how are you? Servus, good, Sevis. and you? Yeah, very good. Nice to see you in your garden again. Another busy day at the office though, so thank you for joining us. You're welcome. What have you got for me, some news? I can see your cats around there, out in the garden. Sorry, <laughs> I was watching the I cats think that and is not, I thinking... think that not the you, that's not the news that people I want to hear. No. Um, yeah, a lot of a lot of things happened since the last uh, talk we had. So um, last weekend we had the first bigger germ race from the ADAC. Yes. Um, it was restricted for seventy drivers, but uh, it was it was a race, and I think everything went very well. And now we have every weekend, I think until November, races here in Germany. So it's a really busy calendar, and. Um, yeah, everything is um, at the moment looking quite good. Uh, every race have a high concept to to um, yeah meet all requirements uh, um, regarding to to avoid the spread of the virus. So mm -hmm. so all uh, yeah all organization have to do a lot of work and it's a lot of effort of them to to get the race yeah. started. So I hope the drivers and all the people involved, I will honor it because it's it's a lot of work. I know it from from the DKM race. We are planning for Kerpen in in August, so there is there's a lot of work to do, a lot of planning. You have to register all people. They are on track. You have a limited uh, amount of people are allowed to be on the track. So mm -hmm. for the DKM race, it's example 600 people. They are allowed to be on the track in Kerpen. So we will have only a driver with one. Um, with one person and the mechanic. And also there is a limited uh, access for people from teams. So that is, we have to do it. Otherwise you can't meet the requirements of 600 people. No. Also with the organization, with the stewards, with the marshals on the track and all the people are involved. Uh, yeah, it, it's going very fast and you, you reach uh, these, these target from 600 people. Mm. And uh, for the DKM, we have a really special system every um, body have to re register one seven uh, seven days in advance for the race in the, on an online tool and um, then everybody get an email with the with the barcodes and only with this email and barcode uh, you get access to the track so at the end of the track there is somebody who will scan this code and if it's um, yeah, it's a name on the code similar to to your um, passport, for example. Then you get access to the to the track, mm -hmm. and um, everybody gets a transponder. He has to wear on his shirt or somewhere mm -hmm. next to him. And um, if you are, um, if the distance between you and another people is less than 1.5 meters, this uh, transponder will start to blink with the light, with a small LED light. And if you continue to to be um, uh, yeah, the distance is less than 1.2, uh, 1.5 meters. Um, it will give a small horn, so it will beep or something like mm -hmm. that. I didn't hear it yet. That will be interesting. But the system is really good because it's it's a resi register when two people are really um, uh, close yeah, together, close to each other. Yeah. Yeah. And um, if if one of the people then after the race will um, be infected and they inform the organization, the organization can um, through to this system also inform all the other people who were um, really close to him. And right. there is a chance, really a, a big chance to yeah to keep the the chain closed and to mm -hmm. to see um, if one guy infected who are which other persons can be infected and then they can do a test. Mm -hmm. So I think that is a really good, good system. And um, the first test will be what I heard during the ADAC GT Masters race at the end of July. Mm -hmm. And then one week later, it will be implemented also in the DKM. And how do they, um, I guess, decide something that might be a question people are going to ask? How do they decide at what point you can't bring any more people or um, you know it's it's not possible for people to actually go that might want to go or people that may be able to work you know do they say right 600 and is it the first 600 
or are there yes. like a hundred for so say organization and then the other how does this work no we have uh, we so there the government gave uh, um, a positive signal for the race for six, 600 people so it doesn't matter if we have 600 people from the organization or 600 drivers mm -hmm. it's only um, allowed to have 600 people at the track in the paddock at the area so we will start to count the people at the entrance of the track um, and um, yeah if we 600 wrong people then these person have to go and um, also if there are people who are not registered in, in in our system in the database they also do not get any access no. and people who forgot the barcode they also do not get any access so mm -hmm. there is a really strict um, method we have to follow and um, all the people have to be aware about and they have to um, have to work together with us and also with the organization from mm. all other races and only when you do that at the moment during this time it's possible to 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 do these races we saw the last two weeks at the formula one race they are really strict with the regulations yes. and everybody has to follow and i think the same is is um, is with other with our races mm. and when i when i saw the races that uh, when i saw the regulations at the formula one they are really strict mm. and um i think it's it's yeah it, it it was a good a good picture to to give outside that they are very really strict and they were really looking after and we have to do it also otherwise we do not get any allowance to do the race and then nobody can can no. do races so every we are one one big family and have to work together yes of course, nobody wants it to go back the other way. Everyone wants it to keep progressing. And the people that monitor this system, uh, obviously they work closely with the organisation as well. Um, they are yeah. controlling this, so. Yes, the system is from the German Motorsport Federation. So that is a, a system they, they implemented in the last uh, few months since uh, we had the lockdown. Mm -hmm. uh, to to um, yeah to do races again in Germany that is some it's it's their job and they try to find a system that can help us and yeah I think it's a good way also to to um, yeah to get a give a better feeling to the people on the track mm -hmm. um, sometimes it can be a bit yeah a bit complicated it sounds a bit complicated in in some cases but. I think it's it's quite easy. We will see how the entrance will work when when we have 500 people at the same time. They want to enter the tracks. So it can be mm. a bit interesting, but yeah, I think everybody have to arrange with this, and then it will work. Okay. So from day to day, 600 is the maximum. What about the entries and the races so far that you've seen getting back on track? Do you think this is also quite positive for? this time of the year already? Are you seeing good numbers? Because I know at Cart Magazine you're sort of promoting lots of the races already in the news. Yes, uh, what I said, the, the race last weekend was restricted for 70 drivers, so they had only the, the allowance to have a race with 70 drivers. When I see the WSK in Italy, they have 190, 200 drivers. It looks like that the regulations in Italy are not so strict than in Germany. It's only my feeling, I do not know, but that's something it looks like. Um, but we are in Germany and we, we have to follow the rules here. And um, I think every time it can happen that the government will st stop the allowance they gave yesterday because mm. something happened in this area. So at the moment we are in a really critical time. And um, for me, it's it will be interesting to see what happen happens after the summer break and the summer holidays. now. A lot of people are moving around in Europe and, and do holidays in Italy, France, Spain, Portugal, Greece, wherever. And um, when everybody comes back, uh, we have to see if, if, we, if the number of, of infects will increase or not. And if uh, partly we have a lockdown again, that, is, that happened two weeks ago here in Germany also, because there, was, there were 1,500 people infected in one company and they closed the whole area. And if this happens, for example, nearly Kerpen, they can close the area and then we can't do any races. So no. that is something that can happen, but hopefully it will not happen. But yeah, yeah it will be interesting. And um, I think it will not stop tomorrow. No, that's right. And of course, we don't know. We can only plan for this. And at least it sounds like the German Motorsport Federation has you know, a good strategy um, using the technology. 
I just had this uh, sort of vision of people that not realising they're so close to other people. Um, definitely this will wake them up if they're, you know, walking along and thinking, oh, what's that noise? But obviously that's just an alarm to say, hey, come on, leave a little bit of space and, and so on. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. But very interesting uh, also for me is, as you said, how we manage the 600 people. And I guess it's possible because people want to make sure that they stay safe and it's good for the sport. So Yeah, at the end we have 135 inscriptions now. Yes. And uh, when you count it by two, because everybody have one, one person um, with him, and then we have the mechanics, we have nearly 400 people, and then only 200 Already. are left for, mm. for the organization, for the teams, for the motor tuners, for the for all the people around and uh, yeah that it is a really small amount of people so we have also to look if all the press people can get access to the race or not um, spectators are not allowed um, if we have drivers um, the age is higher than 18 they can only bring one mechanic but not other person um, so that is something we have to do otherwise we cannot reach the the number of people no. they are allowed on the track and also from the organization, some people are working from home. For example, the stewards, only one or two stewards will be on track and the other steward will work from home, like a home office solution. And also for my team, we are thinking about to do something similar that one person is working from home and one person is only at the track. With a live stream, it's possible to do it because you also can follow the races from home only yes. to, to get less number of people on the track and um, yeah, to to secure that we can do the race. Mm, this is important. Okay, so we're going to look forward. The time is closing in, that it's getting closer and closer, but it sounds like uh, in any case, everyone's happy to be back on the track and I'm sure that when there's a maximum number, that's the maximum will be met because anyone that can race will want to race and, and not having that many international drivers, there's lots of places for the local drivers as well if they'd like to come to the race. So. It's good. Yeah, Very we good. have Very now ten, ten, ten guys, guest drivers who sent the inscription. Yes. And I think they, they can all they can all race. And um, yeah, if somebody is interested to do a race in German Championship, he is welcome. He can see all the information on our website, card minus dm.de. And um, yeah, at the moment we have a bit free space, and I do not know if all people will compete who who sent their inscription. Mm -hmm. Normally, one some of them are, do not come to the race, and so there will be some free places, and we are really uh, happy to to welcome them. Also, it's a really tough calendar. So for last two weeks there were WSK. Now next week there's a big race in Zoera. Then we have the ADAC race and the European Championship in the Zoera at the same weekend, and the week after is City KM. So there's a really tough calendar for for the teams, for the mechanics, for the drivers, for the parents. So to to keep this this high level on a good point until october that is really really tough and cost yeah. a lot of effort yes it will but we will catch up with you again in a couple of weeks and see how it's progressing maybe you can give us some feedback from some of the german drivers that might be you know in that process at the moment of doing all the races and see how they're handling it um, of course it's summer holidays as you said so it makes it a little bit easier for people, they don't have to race back to school and everything on Monday. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. At the moment, no school. <laughs> no, no yes. school anyway, but school at home. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Bjorn. And uh, we let you go thank to you. the nice sunny afternoon there in Germany. Have a thank good you. day. Thank you. Thank you. Stay nice safe. evening. Bye. Bye. Our friends in Italy are more relaxed now. They have all they want, pasta, red wine and racing. Andrea Guistini, welcome back to Cart Globe. How are you? Well, hello, Jan, and hello, everyone. We, we're finally back to home after two full weeks of, uh, of karting, first in Hinedra for the latest two acts of the WSK Supermaster Series. And then we moved to, to Sarno for the first round of the WSK Euro Series. It's been a, a very good, uh, good 14 days, but also uh, three emotional uh, races. In the um, for the first week when we was in when we were in uh, in Adria, it's it's been a little bit strange because we we lived 
two races in the same week. So one day we had the qualifying practices, the day the and following the heats, and then we start with the qualifying practices, then with the heats, then with the final of the first of two, the two rounds, and then with the final of the <laughs> uh, the fourth round. So it was. Uh, Mm, difficult to understand at the beginning, but it was an intense week, especially for the driver for the mm -hmm. drivers on track. Mm -hmm. And after after the this this big one, as we called on, on paddock, we moved to to Sarno. And in Sarno, we lived a normal normal weekend, uh, a not one because we were near the forty degrees, so it was very tough on uh, on either side. But we were happy to to leave. So. so such emotional races, and we're happy to be back at, at, our, um, at our routine, if we can okay. consider it like this. Yes, and of course you said you're happy to be back home, but now you can't wait to go back to the track again. Tell me, Yes. Yeah. how, how do you think this is for the drivers at this stage? They've started the racing, and now everything is really jam-packed in every week. Lots of travelling. You know, we're talking to some of the guys also over in Zuera. Um, yeah. Some of the guys in different parts of Europe and different parts of the world. What are, you, what are your thoughts about this? What's the feeling about how will they manage this? Can they cope with it? Not much time for testing. Mm, I spoke with, uh, with many drivers and someone at the beginning was quite scared because they say, OK, we, we have, uh, we're, we're afraid about the possibility of injuries or um, mm, we're not so so trained because during the lockdown, uh, in, during the period of the lockdown, or more in general of the stop of races, uh, you had just two weeks of testing. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning, people was quite uncertain. But day by day, it's like uh, it's like it's like normal. The, the people start to to think as was nothing nothing was right. changed, and we all all happy. And I think that especially for the newcomers. For the rookies in uh, in OK or um, in juniors, the fact that there are many competition uh, uh, so close, it's it's helpful because they they have the possibility to test day by day was they learned previously. So I think that this is very this is very important for the drivers. But the problem is that if you miss one of the races, you see the difference. For example, mm -hmm. I have many I have some clients that say miss the first week of racing in uh, in Edra. And when they arrived in um, in um, in Sarno, they told me, yeah, especially for the first days, they told me, okay, it's very different. It's mm -hmm. very different, and we see that the gap is is in, uh, has been increased. Then day by day, session by session, they reduce the gap. But at the beginning, they see the difference. Yeah. So also the fact that now the most of the driver is going to to Suera for the first time after I think it's if I'm not wrong, this is the it's past the third year since the last time, but the last time of competition there. Uh, it's um, it's important to see what will happen and how the driver will adapt to the track. Because mm -hmm. also because this track will host the the first round of the of the European Championship. Obviously, we have, for example, the uh, the example of uh, Pedro Hildebrand who missed this race because he remained injured in uh, in Asia. And this, uh, I'm I'm quite curious to see. I spoke with him. And he told me, hey, I'm, not, I'm not scared about this, but we have to see if when he'll, uh, once he'll go back, he will have problem or uh, he will have a, g a gap to reduce by the, his, um, his opponents. We'll see. We have just yes. to, to wait. We'll have to see. Okay, so, but generally a positive feeling, everyone's back and as you say, starting to think normally. So anything else that we should be watching out for in the next few weeks that you know about or anything you've heard or? I'm always looking for something, a scoop. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see, especially in the OK senior class, if Oliver Gray will confirm his incredible, the incredible pace he has in, uh, in Sarno. Yes. Because uh, in the latest three years, the only, the, the only one driver did better than him. It was uh, Dexter Patterson in his first race with Carter Republic in a say two years ago. It was first by the first, the, the first session of warm-up till the final. This time, uh, Oliver just missed one, uh, one hit in which arrived second, but then he was always first. So yeah. I, I encourage to see if he'll, if he'll maintain and if he'll, he will confirm this pace. And I think yes, because he has the capabilities and also he has a strong package with the Charles Leclerc and Cam engines. So I think that he, he can, he can um, probably not, 
not in, not like the last time. So he'll have uh, many many more opponents, but I think that he can can still be on top. Okay, and we've got lots of racing happening. So I guess you're going to be really busy at Vroom as well now with all the other yes. racing that's starting yes. to kick off over the next uh, weeks. Every weekend there are so many races that you can watch and, and follow. So I, I'm looking forward to the next issue. It's going to be about this thick, I think. <laughs> yeah, it will be, but for us it's easier because uh, by your side, especially when you have uh, a monthly issue, it's, it's difficult when, when, for example, we were in on the, um, during the lockdown. For the first month, it was easy because you had a lot of uh, subject about the lockdown and the impact of the lockdown. Yes. But uh, the last two months of lockdown was very was very tough for us because we have to find something to, to write about races. Also, because I remember that after the first months, we have a, a true stop because the factory was closed, yes. no tests. No possibility and no, no sense to update about the uh, race late no. or uh, or um, cancellation. Everything was so, changing constantly. Yes, mm, day by day. Now, obviously, it's easier because now we have many more races to cover and to to tell to our to our readers. Yes. So we're happy and we are yeah. more uh, more happy and also excited to see what will happen. Yes. The rest of everyone's the excited year. to see what happens because we've missed out on that part after winter. We just started yeah. to sort of get everything going and most people say everything was going really well. So now we'll see what happens after the, the, the lockdown, after the break. Everyone's back on track in most of Europe anyway, at least, not all countries. Yeah. But in any case, uh, Andrea, thank you very much for your time. And no thank doubt we'll be, we'll be watching uh, some of the great videos and, and following online, social media everything at Vroom International, so it's been great to have you. Yeah, thanks you for hosting me and uh, see you next time. Yes, we'll see you next time. Bye. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye all. See you. Bye -bye. Ciao. Bye bye. Ciao, ciao. We're back in Austria, where a big bull watched over the Formula One the last weekends and all our racetracks are back in the game. Remember to please like and subscribe and share the news until we meet you again. Auf Wiedersehen.